Well, I decided I wanted the 80 meters. Uh, I didn't have any antenna that would work on that, although the transceiver works on 80 meters. So I bought a diamond HF 80 CL, and I decided I'd try to mount it on the roof and see if I could get by with it. Uh, I figured it was pretty near the bottom of the band where it was uh, resonant because if you want to chop it off it would get higher. Uh, it's 1.2 meters long, the whole thing, and I decided to buy some steel rods for my cutting experiments. I figured I could do my experimenting on something I could replace easily instead of instead of the actual top element of the antenna. It should electronically be the same uh, frequency, roughly. So the first thing I had to do was cut off the steel bar so it was the same length as the antenna itself. I took the rod out on the porch and put it into the base of the antenna to see what the resonant frequency actually was before I started chopping anymore. The nano VNA was set from 3.5 to 3.8 megacycles. As I expected, uh, the antenna was resonant way at the bottom of the band. I started by cutting off about a centimeter and that made practically no difference in the resonant frequency. When I cut off about an inch more, it made some difference in the resonant frequency, but it was still way below where I wanted to go. cut off uh, another inch and a half or so and uh, that put me roughly where I wanted to be about the middle of the band. I left about uh, four and a half centimeters on the bottom to go into the slot in the base of the antenna and I covered the rest of the uh, rod with shrink tubing. I used four millimeter shrink tubing and I bent it at the top and put another little piece of largest shrink tubing over the top. Then I use the hair dryer on the whole uh, element. Now that I've made this whole part of this uh, whip waterproof except for the bottom which is bare metal I put it into the hole and I'd already measured off the right length so it pretty well goes all the way in. And then I have to tighten it up. up. Should be the right length now. I'll take a piece of shrink tubing that covers 
the set screws in the bottom of the whip part. And I'll just shrink that so it prevents any water from getting anywhere because I'm, I'm not planning to go up in the roof very soon. So that's completely waterproof now, cut to the right length. Should be ready to go up in the roof. I made a bracket to uh, mount the antenna on. The roof overhangs a little bit about here. So uh, I have to put it so that it'll hit the roof and it'll hit the wall that's further in uh, here. So I made a bracket, a little bracket to hold it to the edge of the roof, the top the overhang. And this is going to reach into the wall and I put on a ground here too. This bit is made out of a wrench that I pounded 90 degrees and ran a double SO239 through it and bolted it on. And the other half is made of uh, the remnants of my flower box that I replaced with a shelf. It's a bracket to hold a plastic flower box. So this should be ready to go on the roof now and I'll just put in four screws, two in that and two in this. And uh, it'll be ready to uh, screw the antenna on and the coax. The coax is already there because I'm going to borrow the one from the end fed and try it on this and see if it does any better. I want to do it this way. It tightens instead of loosens. And I got back down again with my son holding the ladder, which was a little on the short side. There turned out to be an awful lot of noise on 80 meters. So I uh, don't know where that's coming from. But I think I may have to get a, a 20 meter whip to screw onto that bracket instead of 80. <laughs> <laughs> 